Welcome to the bold analysis. The parliament is resuming on 13th of February this week. However, the military bosses and other security ranks are a bit rattled by the first proposed amendment by Kimani Chungwa that was sponsored by William Ruto that is supposed to be tabled in parliament and Ray Lodinga is the person delivering their fear. I want us to look at the details of that amendment and why the security ranks are a bit rattled by it. But just before that, I need to say thank you. Thank you for supporting our February project. We do pick one project and we support the society in February as part of our social corporate responsibility under the BOLD Charity Network. That is a subsidiary program under the BOLD and this is what transpired. Hi guys, so I'm so happy finally the February project is done. I know most of us have been talking about this. We did know it will come to fruition but I'm in Mamalusi and uh, I've managed to get 13 out. Yes, I was planning for seven but who knows, eh? God has another way of doing his own things. That we managed to our to 13 and apart from that we've also done some food stuff because you know these guys are how mabo meko hospitali for long na hawajakuwa waki hawajakuwa kifanya kazi so what we decided is that whatever has remained we do some food stuff for them and i'm just so happy that they are going home one another to reunite with the rest of their family some have been here for long so i just want to say thank you on behalf of old charity network my family, myself, and everyone, in whatever way you've come through this, Nasema Santeni Sana. These women are out. Now, I'll just give two or three chance for some to get to Moja. Can you say thank you? That's what I will. My name is Winnie Awol. To Meshkuru, Kakuja Kutoa Uku, to make a Uku for long. Na the bill was too much yenye atungeweza ku afford but bold charity network imekuja ikatotoa na tunasema ni asante na si wewe na ya wanjiru ama mama fever na nataka kuambia asante kwa sababu bill ilikuwa mop singeweza kulipa but kwa ajili ya Mungu ati mimi natoka asante god bless you all I heard. Can you come? 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 Can Niko out, ntaenda sasa kungana na familia yangu. Asante sana. Mimi naitwa Lydia Chelimo. Mbili mm, yangu ilitoka the 16. But singe manage ulipa but court ameni wesesha ni nimetoka huku ndatoka leo. Nimeshukuru sana na nimefurahi. Sawa. Eh. Yeah. So guys, that was it. I had to give you this confirmation that yes. finally to me manage and may God meet you in the hour of need. I spent two days here listening to their stories uh, and their story is a testament of how we need to come for the society. Mm -hmm. For all those who participated in this Bold Charity Network, this was our CSR for the month of February. Akim Barikiwe, we will do this next time. Asante, <coughs> Sarah, I'm more happy than them. Asante. 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 So thank you. Thank you. Now, Rhino Dinga has opposed an amendment to the National Security Council that creates, amongst other proposals, the position of National Security Advisor, a move that has created tension within the security ranks. So many questions are being answered. But to better, to make you better understand, I wanted to listen to this part because this is that kind of analysis in 
You just need to get to understand because the analysis, you also need to have that information. What exactly is that amendment? And how does that position of National Security Advisor comes in? You need to get answers to those questions. Why the military guys are not comfortable with that proposed amendment. Kikuyu member of parliament, Kimani Chungwa, who is the majority leader in the National Assembly, has proposed the National Government Administration Amendment Bill 2023 seeking to make changes to the National Security Council. This is the apex body that sits with the president to decide and design the security, uh, some of the security decisions and policies by the government. And this bill was proposed back then on 6th December, just a week before parliament went for recess. So it was supposed to be handled by then, but parliament rushed out and went for recess. And now because they are resuming, it has been tabled as one of the key priority channels, uh, propo uh, amendments by the team. So what exactly are the details? What is in it? Now, in that amendment, it has proposed to create a subcommittee of nine members under the National Security Council. Under the National Security Council that is chaired by the president, where the president is a member and his deputy, there is a subcommittee of nine members that have been created. This is the first part of that amendment. These nine members include Chief of Defense Forces, the Director General of National Intelligence, that is two, the Inspector General of Police, that is three, the Solicitor General, that is four, and four principal secretaries, not cabinet secretaries. I want you to get, uh, the National Security Council had the cabinet secretaries. Now, this subcommittee is supposed to have four principal secretaries from the National Treasury, Defense, Foreign Affairs, and Internal Security. If you do your good observation, these four principal secretaries are all cronies of William Ruto. All the way, if you check, you can, you can check through. You realize that while the president might have picked, there is a possibility that a president might have picked this, some of these dockets on other factors, but the principal secretaries are people that are appointees of the president. And there is one person who will not necessarily be amongst these members, but that person will be appointed by the president with necessary skills and knowledge as prescribed by the council. You know, so Hapa, the principal secretary, the National Security Council has the cabinet secretaries. So the cabinet secretaries have been kicked out here. The president is not a member. And they will appoint one person to be the secretary of the National Security Council. The secretary of the National Security Council will be the secretary of this committee. And after it all, there is the standalone creation of the National Security Advisor, this is the devil. This is where, this is what has rattled different members and even experts are asking. What is clothed as a National Security Advisor is a standalone position. But in real sense, this person will, this office will be the principal advisor to the president on security matters. Question. It's a very important question. This national security advisor is not a member of this subcommittee and is not a member of the National Security Council. So where does that person fall? It, in the understanding is that that will be the office that will be next to the president. Then this national security council and the other committee falls below this office. In simple terms, there is a new office that has been created to lead all this. This 
National Security Advisor will be the leader of all this military, intelligence, police, and all these other offices. Question. On national security matters, ukiwa na mkubwa jeshi, ukona mkubwa polisi, mkubwa intelligence, ukona... Surely, why would you need even that? And Ray Ludinga has opposed it. It is uh, reported that uh, if you look at this photo, there was a recent meeting that Ray Ludinga met the Neil Wigan, UK ambassador in the country. And this was largely part of that discussion. With an understanding that maybe some fellows that are a bit stakeholders that are a bit rattled are the ones that have reached out to Royal Odinga maybe to raise this matter. Some of these things are not just raised just for the sake of it and actually this creation mirrors the structure in UK. Now when you look at uh, in UK there is the position of national security advisor. It's even, it's even in the US. Now read this part. The National Security Advisor, the NSA, is secretary to the National Security Council. Now, if you look at the UK, and this is where it's creating all that contradiction. Huh? In UK, this National Security Advisor is the secretary to the National Security Council in UK. Here, that is not made clear. Whether this is the person that is going to be the secretary to the National Security Council, it is not clear. And in UK... And that council which is shared by the Prime Minister, the head of national security, intelligence, which, is, which in turn is part of the cabinet office. The NSA will also advise secretaries of state and senior government ministries on issues of national security when necessary. This is not late being clear. If look at what look at what the UK structure is saying, that this is the secretary to the National Security Council. Now that is not made clear in our case. The NSA, and this is very important, was the senior is the senior responsible officer for the conflict stability and security fund with the budget of one billion. This role has been passed to the Deputy National Security Advisor. Then they have a fully functional office with even the Deputy National Security Advisor. Remember, we already have someone holding that position in the name of Monica Juma. And even though that office is not entrenched in the Constitution. So that amendment is just to entrench that uh, office. And question, so if it is constitutionalized, will they change the holder? What is the change of tenure? Of the holder will this person be reshuffled with other cabinet members remember it is neither permanent nor temporary this person looks like an appointee of the president and that is why it was raised second question about it the current holder in the UK is a gentleman known as um, Satim Barrow and now secondly and look at uh, let, let me let me just continue still where I'm telling it mirrors the US look at the responsibility of the National Security Advisor Principal advisor to the Prime Minister and Cabinet on National Security Matters. Number one, provide advice to the Prime Minister on Cabinet on National Security. This includes strategy, policy and capacity, capability and civil contingencies. Acting as Secretary to the National Security Council. That is not explained in our case. Leadership to add management of the national security teams in the Cabinet Office. Bringing together wider national security community across Whitehall and our and our overseas network, cultivating and maintaining a network of international stakeholders as well as contacts with relevant, relevant counterparts, businesses, industry, and civil society organizations. Now, this is the person that will decide on who the president is calling. Come on, Apigia Bidendeo. It, it is, if you look at, the, look at that, the way that office is very heavy in the UK, and it is constitutional, it's in the constitution. In our case, Rala is saying such a position was not envisioned in our constitution and it is unconstitutional. So that is just a bit of it. Second concern is a question. In the run-up to the 2022 general election, former President Uhuru Kenyatta dispatched a team to meet Chebukati. And there have been a question of 
before election results are announced, is it allowed for the results to be served to the National Security Council so that they can plan on security adjustments needed before that is done? There have been that question. And it's a gray area that even the political is not coming out clear about it. But if in case it is perhaps allowed for the head of uh, IBC to brief the National Security Council on the outcome of just the results, then look at that structure that has been created. And that is why people are asking questions. Look at the way this was a contention when Chebukati appeared before IBC, before the tribunal. At 3 a.m. in the morning, those issues are not worth considering. So at least, so, which are correct. So at least at 3 a.m. we know there were no results. The next, when uh, you met the next uh, committee uh, people, what time was it? It when was at 2 p.m. on uh, 15th. The N NCAC people? Yes. And, uh, yes. Yeah, then, so, and and so, yeah. so at that time, again, you didn't have the results? We had not received the form that was it. was still being printed by the CEO. Yeah. So there were no results again? We had not received the form that was it, but the... All the results had been tallied and verified, all the constituencies. You told us that this group of people, they, they looked threatening and in, they basically threatened you. I mean, you looked threatened, you felt threatened and intimidated. No, they, do, they didn't look threatened. It's a message. Oh, it's a message. The message they carried. And they said we should look at them carefully to see the composition of who they were. So, Chairman, you've been the chair for five plus years, about six years, senior lawyer, and uh, you felt threatened, or there was, were threatening. My client has hardly been there for a year. So, from your own perception, how do you think she was feeling? Threatened or she didn't care. I mean, because if the chairman is threatened, she will, what about the other committee? So, the functionality of National Security Council is at stake. And that is why the military bosses and the security bosses are, are, are raising questions. And I want to believe something here. What Tyler is saying, is raising, is not a standalone. Sometimes, those who are within cannot speak. When you see the likes of Ray Lodinga speaking, it is not just a pedestrian thought. That's one thing I've always said. It is not just Raila raising the point. It is clear those who are talking and those who are raising these questions, what is Raila's interest in it? Let me just ask. Do you think it is Raila's interest? No. This is coming from within. And people within are raising this question. That is why when you see Raila saying, and even the angle, who is even serving him? Some of those details. For me, there are three contentions about it. Why there is a bit of this contention. Kindly subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell, and like our videos. Thank you very much for supporting our podcast, and may God bless you in your endeavors. Three possibilities. One, this will be applied to reroute special funding on security. It's possible. <laughs> if you look at that US, that UK, there is that budget is there is a budget of around 1 billion euros put on that on security now this will create a centralized office that will manage some security funding and this will create a bit of some friction that's possibility number 2 president william ruto is creating a position and this position creates some bureaucratic bottlenecks on security matters Question, if you already sit with what Wajeshi, now at water, then why would you come out of National Security Council and still go and get someone to advise you elsewhere? What is that input? What is that input that National Security Advisor is going to make apart from, away from that National Security Council? And again, if it is not envisioned in our constitution, then, you know, in a matter of national security, it, is, it really needs 
a lot of trust in building. And the third aspect is, how do you trust sensitive security secrets just to a trusted government appointee? This security, national security advisor will be appointed by the president and approved, vetted and approved in parliament. Nominated by president, the name forwarded to parliament, it will be vetted and approved, then appointed by the president. So, people that take military, intelligence, police, there is a oath that they take. And they owe it even to the forces. But now here, is you take a civilian, get through that process, and there is a clear point that president is just getting some, some point G to create some bureaucracy. And who happens? Who knows if that position can be abused? Thank you.